your shooting schedule stretched over a year, right? You read about that. Yeah. <laughs> Typhoons and COVID and <laughs> what else? COVID, so many things. Other productions, because, you know, there's, it's like the Wild West in Vietnam right now. Everybody's shooting, you know. Whenever COVID lets up, there's just everybody starts shooting. And so, you know, crew members get booked very quickly, you know. And so while we were waiting, like, my DP was booked on another show. Right. And so we're like, OK, now we have to wait for that show to be done with. And by, by the time that was done with COVID hit. And so it was just, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but we're so we're so happy that we finally made it. And, you know, it, got, it was selected for Sundance. So just wonderful. Yeah. And congratulations. Congratulations. And you had, uh, you know, had the kids in mind. You had to get them situated, too, and be safe with them. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, you know, working with them. Um, their schedule is always the first priority, right? So we knew that we, when we were working with kids, we always have to schedule around their resting time. So we, you know, plan like four to five hours at a time, and then we, we, we go and we shoot something else, and we'll come back because you know they need they need rest time. Yeah, but yeah. never underestimate the value of bubble tea. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's go back to uh, to the beginning here. Uh, doing a family type movies something that wasn't wasn't in your wheelhouse before mm. but it was your own personal experience and then this story were, were you aware of how popular uh this story was in vietnam before you uh came upon no. it to do it i had no idea i had no idea about the tv show until i started doing this film and then i actually looked into it and i was like wow it's hugely popular and i was like that explains it because there are shops in vietnam that are called mica and I never knew, like, why would somebody name a shop Micah in Vietnam? And now, you know, after after starting to do research on the film, I was like, oh, it's because of the show, you know. And I started finding out things like there's there's a Micah bowl haircut. So, you you know, parents would go into the barber shop and go, give give my daughter the, the Micah cut, you know. Wow. <laughs> so it's kind of like this Yikes. based on the old TV show. Yeah. And so uh, my AD. Um, I had worked with her on a couple of commercials and I was like, well, you know, I'm doing my feature next. Um, it's called, it's, it's Micah. It's, it's the re reimagination of uh, the reimagining of the old TV show. And she's like, really? My daughter's named Micah, you know, <laughs> and she's in her early thirties. And so this was exactly sort of her formative years, you know, just, just um, she remembered the TV show. They, they remember coming out every waiting every summer for the TV show to rerun. Oh. And then there were cinemas that were booking uh, the episodes and selling tickets for people, you know, to see it on the big screen. <laughs> wow, and it was like The Little Mermaid with Ariel. Everybody kept naming their kids Micah. Absolutely, absolutely. Everybody kept naming their kids Micah. And so <laughs> even our, our production babies, uh, our uh, UPM, she ended up getting pregnant on the first day that we started shooting. <laughs> and so by the time that we wrapped, she had already delivered her baby, Micah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, yeah. this comes from a Czechoslovakian story. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that? Yeah, so the, the TV show um, came from an actual uh, book. Um, and so it, the book was written in 1969. The TV show was made in 1974, right? Wow. They only made one season like 12 episodes, 13 episodes. And, um, but then, you know, and then the show died out, but it found an audience in Vietnam in the late eighties, early nineties, you know, and they found it, it was a huge occult following. And so BHD was the production of the studio that hired me. They were fans as well. You know, the owners, were the, the heads of the studios were fans and they had been wanting to produce it for four years before I came onto the scene. And they had only had an outline written by Vincent Noll, who wrote Hancock. And, um, and so in 2018, they approached me with it. I was going through um, the loss of my mom. So I was, I was grieving and I, you know, I didn't know how to get over my, my grief. I'm the baby of the family, so I'm really close to my mom. And, uh, and then, so when they gave me this outline and I read, oh, the story is about a little boy who's lost his mother and needs to overcome his grief. And then he meets this little alien who becomes his best friend, you know? I was like, I can relate to this kid, right? And so I started, you know, taking it on its, its own little, um, its own path. 
really a departure from the, the TV show because the TV show, she, she lands and she meets with a group of kids. Ah. And then it's all about her being a delegate from another, another planet and you know, having a press conference to show, you know, um, to demonstrate to everybody that she's from another planet. And she's also a robot. And I was like, well, you know, the whole robot thing, it made me think of, I don't know if you remember that TV show, uh, Small Wonders. Uh, it was on for like, on Saturdays. It was really cheesy, yeah. it was on Fox. But it was a little girl <laughs> robot, you know? And I was like, I didn't want it to be a, a, like a little girl robot, like Small Wonders. So I said, let's, let's make her like an organic alien, right? And let's build a concept around, around her being like, you know, what, what, what her, where her powers came from, because she does have powers, right? And so the whole idea um, I started developing was I was in really into meditation at the time because I, I was using that to overcome my own personal grief. Understand. And so I had written into it like, oh, it's all about sounds, all about vibrations, you know, it's all about the heart chakra. And so when she uses her power, when she arrives on the scene, um, different vibrations you would hear, right? And so, you know, it also helps me like settle my heart, you know, as, as I mm. start the film. And so if you, if you listen very carefully at the very beginning of the film, you hear that tone, right? Uh, it's a very specific frequency that helps us calm the heart. So it just brings us into, into the film. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, casting uh, your leads. Uh, both uh, Micah, who, as I understand it, this is her first film. She's, she's a model, a child model, not an actress. Beautiful. Yeah. And, and the two boys, and the two boys, Hung and Bao, uh, are, uh, they have an interesting relationship too. This is, this is all part of, all part of that script. They have that push me, pull me, uh, best friend kind of, kind of relationship. And I, and, and the fact that he has the inhaler, the Bao uses his inhaler all the time, was a nice touch as well. He's so animated. Yeah. Yes, he is. And, and, you know, and he was great because Bao, uh, he's played by Tintin. And Tintin has been a stage performer ever since he was four years old. Oh. Four years old. He's on the stage singing, dancing, rapping, you know, and he's singing like, like folk opera, right? Vietnamese, you know, uh, folk, folk opera. And, uh, and, so, and so he just loves the camera. But it's very interesting because we tried to do an interview with him recently. And now that he's gotten older, he's gotten a little bit camera shy. But this oh, boy, I swear to you, when we were filming, all you have to do was point a camera at him and he was on, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's very so, strange. Uh, we loved it. I mean, and, and, and you know, what I like about him is his playfulness, you know? But then you can see in his eyes that he has so much heart as well. And that was the criteria for this film, was that at the end of the day, like this, all the relationships, they have heart. Like people can relate to them. Right. Um, same thing with Micah. Her eyes are so beautiful. Right. When we saw she was from Hanoi and uh, we didn't have the budget to fly out to Hanoi. So we had, you know, we asked a friend to grab his camera, the phone and just video, you know, her audition for us. And when we saw the, the clip, her eyes are half of the, you know, half of the frames. So okay. we're like, oh, it's amazing. Right. They're so big and they're so wide. Um, she wasn't an actress, so she read everything very mechanically. And uh, my casting director was like, ah, it's too bad she can't act. And I was like, no, she can. She's just an alien, you know? Oh, <laughs> I think yeah. we can work with that. We'll, we'll slowly work that in. She's got a Northern accent. So we worked in the joke. Oh, you're from Hanoi. I thought you were an alien. Oh. So we worked that in because of her, right? Uh, and it's, it's true because, you know, when I first came back to Vietnam, I, my, my accent is very heavily South, Southern. And so when I go to the North, I can really understand what they're saying. It's like the North don't understand what the North, uh, but the South doesn't understand the North, the North doesn't understand the South. And nobody understands anybody from the middle region <laughs> because their tones, they have zero, they, they, have, they don't have any accents at all. So it's just a neutral tone. So you, like people like get really lost when they hear somebody from the middle region talking. So, so you know, we threw that in there just for fun. Um, but then she was great. Um, you know, she, she learned Czech. So the first few lines was an homage to the old TV show oh. when she first sees home. And she said, right? Move less, Czechy. Those are all, you know, uh, they're, they're Czech. It's, Czech you know, it's in Czech language. It's Slovakian, yeah. And so uh, we actually knew a Vietnamese singer who's, who's from the Czech Republic. So we asked her to come and coach this little girl, you know, 
and make a little video clip. And so she would learn by rote, you know, exactly how to say the lines. So that was, that was fun. Uh, the kid who... Oh, I have uh -huh. a question about the way you shot her because there are several scenes where she stares. Did you slow down the camera? Did you do something in post? No, no. she could just do I just that. Asked her, I just asked her just <clears throat> ready. Cause I was like, okay, just relax your eyes, relax your eyes now open and keep them open, you know? And so she, cause, and it was hard for her to do that because we had the wind blowing in her hair. So we had, you know, leaf oh. blowers like blowing so that her, you know, it would look very dramatic, you know? And so it would basically, right before we call action, she would close her eyes and relax and relax and we go, and three, two, one, action, and she will open them, you know? Yeah, wow. and, and then she was so intense with her eyes and I, that, that, was, that was the one quality that, I, you know, that was like, okay, that's it. This is our girl. Very know, effective. Uh, can I ask a question about the comedy? Uh, there's a lot of slapstick, overt, mm -hmm. uh, over the top <laughs> slapstick. Is that part? Is that part of the Vietnamese uh, sense of humor? Is that playing to a Vietnamese audience? As, as an American, uh, I don't certainly haven't been exposed to uh, much Vietnamese uh, culture. Certainly, film is this part of the, the 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 humor? Is is that Vietnamese? Yes. Yeah, it's it's very Vietnamese broad broad comedy humor, right? And then because usually there are two types of of humor that's that's used on screen. It's just it's very vaudeville. So one is very vaudeville. It's all based on like dialogue and sort of setup and payoffs, right? Gotcha. Um, and then the other is just slapstick, very physical comedy. And so with the kids, I couldn't really do the vaudevillian style because they're kids. So, you know, how witty yeah. can they be, right? So they, they, we can't get too, too, um, uh, too far academically or, or uh, literally. Um, and so, you know, I, I really played it more of what kids love, which is just fun slapstick antics, right? Um, and then, and, and so most of the time, you know, when we're thinking about, when I was thinking about, well, how would kids fight against the adults, you know? And so I had to sort of like go in, into Home Alone territory, right? It was like that, yeah. and what I love about that film was that, you know, he fought, he fought the, 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 the two intruders a way a kid would fight, you know? And so I always had to have that in mind. I was like, Home Alone did it right because that's how kids think, you know? They're, they're, make, they're making weapons from their toys. They're, they're using things that they know because otherwise, what are they gonna do? You know, they can't be too sophisticated in making their weaponry, right? How much was, was there any improv that, that, that they did that, you know, was something that you didn't expect that all of a sudden you saw them do? <laughs> well, a lot of the lines were sort of, they were, had already been written, but the way that I work with the kids is that don't worry about the lines. Just, if you know the scene, so I, I explain the scene to them and I just say whatever comes natural to you, you know? Um, and so, you know, things like when, when Micah is going, what do you think about this, you know? Uh, the, the line was like, oh, that bar, right? Which is, oh, so pretty. And he goes, that gelum, right? Which is very much like gorgeous. You look gorgeous, right? <laughs> so, uh, that's, you know, that's all them. That's all them doing their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Exaggerated. And, you know, like, yeah, exaggerated. Even like um, uh, Kubel, when he, when he clips uh, Hong's uh, airplane and he goes, ah, <laughs> Right. So he loves he loves Gangnam style. He's always singing. Gangnam, ah, Gangnam. there you go. It's like, it's like Opa Gangnam style, but he he switched it on his own to make it the characters thing. Opa Kubel style, right? Kubel's his name, right? So instead of Gangnam, he switched it in. So that's all him. That's all him. Yeah. Oh wow! And I love the armpit farts. <laughs> And of course, the little yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the finger wiggle. <laughs> also, you kind of made an, an interesting choice in casting where your villain is a the the best yeah. looking guy in the movie. He's he's got the he's got the uh -huh. the, movie, the movie star looks, and and yet he's the the evil guy. That was kind of an interesting yeah. choice in casting. Because we, we want you know. The whole character, that, that character is based on like sort of like Elon Musk, right? It's the, the man with the, yeah. with the vision, the man with the dreams, who's like bigger than himself, right? Uh, and so, and, and we wanted him, we wanted to play against the expectation, right? So he's very charming, right? He's very outwardly, very, very charming. And when he speaks, it's very inspiring, you know? And so that's the character. But at the end of the day, he 
he has an agenda and we don't know what it is yet, you know, and slowly we sort of uncover what the agenda is. Um, and then sort of his character is also built so that we can have a prequel <laughs> if this film is successful, because I knew that, you know, if the film was successful and we did Micah 2, we can't necessarily bring Micah back because then they're much, they're going to be much older, right? We oh, don't yeah. know when we'll be able to make it. Yeah. So, so I sort of had it written so that there's a backstory that there was a precursor to Micah, right? So she had a comrade who came here bef before her right. and then got stuck. And so the whole storyline is, is how he discovered the alien and sort of, you know, uh, experimented with, with, with him, right? And then, um, so that's how he knew, that's how he developed all of his, all of his um, uh, engineering, all of his power to sort of go into space. So that's all based on learning from the previous alien. You guys are the first to know about that. I've actually never talked about that before. Oh, that's, that's great. And I love the, you know, the tech tight uh, that the, the alien can, yes. he, he, uh, he ends up as this, this powerful stone, all powerful stone. Well, the interesting thing was that as I was doing my research, you know, I was going, what can we use? Like, what is it about Vietnam? Because I also wanted, really wanted to make it Vietnam specific. And so Tektite is an actual um, asteroid. You know, it's, it's the glass that's from the meteors um, uh, from outer space, you know. And there are only like about four countries that are abundant in Tektite. And Vietnam happens to be one. Australia is another. You know, India is another, and so Vietnam is one. And it happens to be really close to Da Nang where we were shooting. So I was like, great, I'm gonna work this right into the film. You know, and then of course, when you read up about the tektite, yes, it is, there's, you know, there's literature that says, oh yeah, it, it has healing powers. And then, you know, you can use tektite to contact aliens. So I wrote the, all of that in there as well. Cause I was like, this is kind of cool and nifty, you know? Wow. Um, and so for people who wanna go, you know, deep diving into the whole, um, uh, background of it they can actually do that um and it's a, such a beautiful stone it's amazing you know it looks like a miniature meteor it, it does um and uh and you know as i was researching things i was finding out more stuff because here's the thing right in vietnam most people don't watch sci-fis right because their whole idea is what does vietnam have anything to do with space like we've never ventured out into space that's where they're wrong right that's where most people are wrong because the very first Asian in space was Vietnamese, I had to, right? I had to and his name is, you know, Phan Tung, and he's still alive to this day. We actually wanted him to do a cameo, right? Oh. Uh, but it was COVID, and so he was really he was really nervous because you know he's 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 quite up there in, in 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 his age, and so he was very very nervous about going out in public. So we're like, okay, maybe we can save it for later. But you know, at least I wanted to sort of put his picture in the film so we can acknowledge, hey, you know what? This is a, this is a, 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 an a issue of pride for us. You know, we should be proud of That's this. a hero. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And he's, he's done like more than 60, I, you know, I wanna say a hundred, but he's, he's done a lot. He's done more than 60 missions into outer space. Maybe you yeah. can use him for the prequel. I know, I know that, right? That would be interesting, right? It would yeah. be very cool if we, if we had his, uh, if we can get his permission so we can write a character based on him. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. What a great idea. Movers and shakers. We love learning that there's so many more layers to this movie than just a, you know, calling it just a kid movie nice. or a, a family movie is misses the point. There's a lot, there's a lot for us to learn about Vietnam, about Vietnam and the Vietnamese in this movie as well. And that was clearly your intent as well. Well, and a lot of heart, as you said, I mean, it's nice to know that it was, it was your personal story as well. And you put a lot of yourself in it and uh, yeah. it shows, I mean, there is a lot of heart in this movie. Well, I wanted to make it as a love letter to my mom, you know, as a tribute to her. And so I knew that, you know, whatever I did, I had to, I had to make sure that the, the, the emotions were there, you know? I think uh, my producer said it best. He calls it the feels, right? Because <laughs> I was like constantly rewriting the script while we were shooting. Because, wow. you know, Vietnam is, is it's, it's crazy. The period of production is like nine months. You write a script, 
I barely turned in the first draft and they're like, okay, let's shoot it. I was like, no, this is the first draft. <laughs> you never shoot the first draft, you know? And of course, the, uh, Vincent, who wrote Hancock, he read the first draft. He's like, you can't shoot this. You can't shoot this. It's not ready. And I was like, I, I don't know. The, the, trains, the trains left the station, you know? And he's like, no, no, you have to stop it. You have to rewrite it because it's not there yet. And so I was like, okay. So Jenny, my producer, was helping me maintain everything, sort of like to start to still keep pre-producing while I, you know, while giving me time to like rewrite. And Anderson, my other producer, was constantly reading every every new scene that I had written. And his number one priority uh, criteria was that um, it had to have the feels, what he calls the feels, right? So if it's emotionally charged, it's good, right? And so that's that's that was um, our mandate was to make sure that whatever whatever I had rewritten of the script, it needs to have it needs to be emotionally charged, right? Whether it's it's the bad guy's motivation, he has some connection to it, right? It's his personal, his lifelong work. And so if Micah takes it all away from him, it's an emotional thing for him, you know? And so just to make sure that everybody's, all the characters are fully invested in what they want. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. feels are there all the way through. I mean, in every relationship with Hung and his father, with his father and uh, his, his girlfriend, and the, the nurse, nurse and then finally, the three of them coming together. There's, there's, the friendship. And, and of course, hung in his mother and, and the mother, the memory yeah. of his mother. It's there through every, yes. in almost every scene. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, and that's the one thing, especially the relationship with Hong and his father, because I feel like that's, that's a relationship that's very typical of Asian families, you know, where the father doesn't know how to show his emotion. You know, and I, I have that same relationship with, with my dad. Um, and it was really cool to, to hear our composer when he was writing the, the, the scene where uh, the, uh, the father was like, sometimes I don't know, I don't know what he wants, you know? Mm. Um, and he got emotional writing the, the music for that scene because he felt like that's his biggest fear as a father you know, is A, working too hard, not being there for his, for his kids, and B, being so, you know, um, uh, uninvolved that he doesn't know what they want, right? And so he, you know, he sort of, he, that, that's, it touched on an emotional heartstring for him, yeah. And, well, and, and that's why, you know, I put that in there as well, because that's the difficulty I have with my dad, 